Pro-Chancellor, I present to you Tony Heaton for the award of Outstanding Alumnus of the Year. Tony is a distinguished member of an alumni community that, as we have heard, numbers nearly 150,000 members across the globe. As we recognize his achievements through this award, we also acknowledge and celebrate the wider successes of all Lancaster graduates and the important part they continue to play in the life of our university. Tony Heaton is a highly acclaimed sculptor, performance artist, and champion for disability rights, diversity, and social justice. Born in Preston in 1954, his life direction was shaped at the age of 16 when a motorbike accident left him with a serious spinal injury. He spent his early career as a self-employed artist and sign writer, and was also heavily involved in the music industry as a disc jockey, record shop owner, a member of a progressive rock band. In 1986, Tony enrolled for a visual arts degree at Lancaster, supporting his studies by continuing to work as a sign painter. During a field trip to Morecambe Bay to experiment with environmental sculpture, his tutor, Paul Hatton, commented on how immediately distinguishable Tony's tracks were, created by feet and crutches, compared to the footprints of his fellow students. As Tony recalls, a chance comment became the catalyst for a whole series of works relating to disability and my interaction with the environment. A desire to promote diversity and social justice for the disabled community has informed Tony's art. He first exhibited in Out of Ourselves in 1990 with fellow disabled sculptor Adam Reynolds, for whom Tony later created a memorial bursary. Disability Arts in London magazine described Tony as making use of the everyday impedimenta of disability, collecting cans, NHS wheelchairs, x-rays, part M of the building regulations, but observing that he turned them into profound and joyously witty statements about the nature of our oppression. Notable among his works is Shaken Not Stirred, consisting of a seven foot high pyramid of 1,760 charity collecting cans. It's ascending ranks of red plastic referencing the hierarchical nature of the charity system. Tony turned this piece into performance art when he brought it crashing down by throwing an artificial leg at it, suggesting that the system could be destroyed by the collective power of disabled people. As his reputation as a champion for disability rights through his art grew, Tony began to win notable and highly competitive commissions, including one from the organizing committee for the 2012 London Olympics. This was to create sculptural lecterns for Lord Coe and Sir Philip Craven, based on Tony's seminal 1994 work, Great Britain from a Wheelchair, a map of the British Isles made from two gray NHS wheelchairs. Channel 4 commissioned him in the same year to create Monument to the Unintended Performer, an installation for the Big Four sculpture sited outside Channel 4's offices. These examples represent just a tiny fraction of Tony Heaton's work. Alongside his artistic career, he has strived tirelessly to provide opportunities through art to the broader disabled community. Tony has served variously as director of Holton Lee, a 350-acre countryside campus in Dorset that offers a mix of environmental, artistic, and spiritual activities, including short-stay residential facilities, and as CEO of Shape Arts, a disability-led art organization working with major cultural institutions and disabled people as artists and audiences. In 2017, he stepped down from this role to become chairman of the organization. Tony has also served on many boards and working groups, including Arts Council of England Diversity Task Group, the Tate Access Advisory Group, Disability Arts Online, and as a trustee of Portland Sculpture and Quarry Trust. Tony's outstanding contribution in the service of the arts and the disability arts movement was recognized in 2013 with the award of an OBE in the Queen's Birthday Honors. The range of Tony Heaton's achievements over the last three decades should act as a reminder to each of you graduating today that you too can be successful with commitment and dedication. In reaching for success, we hope that you will make the most of your Lancaster qualifications, not only to better yourselves, but also to benefit your families, your university, and the wider communities in which you live and work. Pro-Chancellor, it is my honor to present Tony Heaton for the award of Outstanding Alumnus of the Year.
So you worry about falling off the stage, I worry about <laughs> wheeling off it. I think mine would be more impressive somehow. I've not tried it. And I'm not going to try it today. Pro Chancellor, fellow members of the university, honoured guests, thank you very much for this award. I know it's a cliche coming to university. And for me, it was an incredibly important life changer. It, was my, it wasn't my first life changing experience, as uh, Nick has pointed out. I swapped a motorcycle for a wheelchair when I was 16. It, um, it got me out my exams and a lot of revision, which was a good short-term gain, but in the long term, it's probably not the brightest thing that I've ever done. I was the first member of my family to go to university. I returned to education as a mature student because no one wanted to take on a young working class bloke in a wheelchair, basically, um, not without the backup of a qualification. And even then it was questionable. So I had to fight to get into university. I applied, I was interviewed, and I was sent away to get some A-levels and a B-tech or some sort of qualifications. Can't actually remember, it's a very long time ago. I think it was test my commitment as a mature student. It actually put me back another year, but it strengthened my resolve to actually get into Lancaster University. So remember when you go out in the world, be tenacious. Remember, tenacity. I studied social administration, psychology, and visual arts. And I made the mistake of putting my speech in a very shiny piece of whatever this is. And, and the light reflects on it. It seemed like a good plan, you know, keep it clean and tidy. So I studied social admin, psychology, visual arts. And it was a while later before I realized that I hadn't been taught anything about these three subjects. What I had learned was how to start thinking, questioning, researching, and how to apply critical thinking, not just to these three subjects, but to everything that I would do throughout my life, then and now. My career has largely been in the third sector, working in citizens advice, social justice, and for the last 20 years as chief executive in London. Throughout all my proper jobs, I've never lost track of my passion and my first love, which is the arts. So I have always won art commissions. I've always applied for arts commissions. And I've always exhibited and worked as an artist throughout all those proper jobs. I didn't want to be a starving artist. That's why I had proper jobs. I also had a family to support. Very few people make a good living as an artist. But I don't want to put anybody off whose ambition is to be an artist. Go out and grab it. Apart from the arts, I needed psychology. I needed psychology in pretty much everything I did. Certainly my job as a chief executive. I guess the things that I learned just, just got rolled up into one thing. So my life, my art, and my work just, become, just became my entire world, my entire, my entire life. And uh, the creativity that I found in the arts just became the root of it all. I actually sold an artwork in my degree show over there in the Scott Gallery. I was absolutely astonished that somebody wanted to buy a piece of my work. I, um, I was greatly encouraged and I wanted to say that if you can afford it, and I think you probably can, then go out, buy work in degree shows, support artists and support art students. Um, I think you'll enjoy the artwork that you buy for your entire life and you'll very quickly forget how little it actually cost you. And certainly when you look back on it, you'll realize what a great deal you've got. So that's my plug for all you guys to go out and support artists. It's actually been a revelation coming back to visit the university after all these years. The last time I was here, I was here as a proud dad for my own daughter's graduation. 
And the university village that I came to study at over 30 years ago has grown into a town. And actually the level of access for me now as a wheelchair user has been very, very impressive. It's been fantastic to be able to get about campus as easily as I have been able to do over the last couple of days. But it wasn't always so. Back then, 30 odd years ago, access at the university was just about manageable. And I studied in the arts department at Pendle, which was right down at the south end of campus. Beyond Pendle College was Long Grass and the M6 motorway. That was pretty much it. When I was getting towards the end of my degree, we were informed that we were going to move to the centre of campus, brand new building. And I asked if I could see the plans for the new building. And I had a look. It was a four-storey building. And I asked where the lift was. And there wasn't one. But don't worry. You'll have left university. <laughs> <laughs> Before we move in, said the powers that be. And I said, what about the disabled students that follow me? What about if I want to come back and visit? I'm not sure they wanted me to come back and visit, but there you are. And apparently it was a matter of priorities, and people like me was, was not a priority uh, back then. Now the paradox was that the very skills that the university were teaching me were the skills that I then used to mount a campaign to challenge the university. And I did what students do. I organized a protest and scanned newspaper, uh, publicized the injustice of it. It was one of the first of many campaigns that I undertook, and I still have to do, as planners, designers, and architects try to avoid providing appropriate access for disabled people. We did, of course, get a lift, and that was very useful because three of the course tutors went on to become disabled people themselves. And life can be very interesting and unpredictable like that. It was a very long time ago. I can tell this story knowing very well that there will be nobody here who will remember and I'm delighted that Lancaster University now prides itself quite rightly on being outstanding in its approach to inclusion, access, and diversity. I want to pay tribute to my next life changer, my tutor, the, the fellow in sculpture, Paul Hatton, the late Paul Hatton, whose chance remarks about my tracks in the sand did indeed start my journey to create art that has become known as disability arts. I want to also make a shameless plug because I've got a golden invalid carriage sort of teetering on the roof of the parish church in Liverpool, uh, St. Uh, St. Nick's Parish Church for anybody that knows Liverpool. So it's there on the roof, it's going to be there for a year, it's called Gold Lame, Lame Lame. So go and have a look at it and it's got, yes it's going to be there for 12 months. And I wanted also to finish by telling you about a dream that I fulfilled. It's a dream I started to have 21 years ago because disability arts was not represented in the mainstream. And I imagine that we should have a national disability arts collection and archive, NDACA for short. It's taken 21 long years to get there. But following a million pounds investment from the Heritage Lottery and some investment from the Arts Council of England, NDACA was finally launched at the House of Lords it's the first national disability arts collection and archive in the world. So I wanted to use that to say to you, hold on to your dreams, don't give up on them. Don't be afraid of failure because we have much to learn from it. And don't forget to be tenacious. And I wanted to say that coming here was a fantastic decision for me. Like some of you, I got no idea back then what I would do and where life might take me. In fact, it was only some time later after graduating, when I was no longer caught up in the maelstrom of all the stuff that you're, you know, that you're in the middle of right now, that I just got time to reflect uh, and start to realise what a great privilege, actually, it was to come to Lancaster University. So thank you, Lancaster, for my education. Thank you for this award, which I'm very, very proud to receive. And congratulations to all of you on your achievements and very, very good luck on all your subsequent journeys, wherever they might take you. And thank you.